Drift No More. That is the conversation that we are having at the moment as we go deeper. Joining me in studio, Pastor Dan, it is always good to have your company, mate. But we're going to get into something a little bit nitty, gritty, and hard to talk about. So I'm very glad that you've had the strength to approach this topic because let's just quickly harken back to the truth that in the church, a lot of people are drifting. Mm. Yeah, we um, started this conversation about this idea that came from a book called The Great Dechurching, where research has shown that over the last 30 years, so that's just since Friends has been on TV, like that's not a very long time, (laughs) but since Friends has been on TV, 40 million people have left the American church, and one in four have left due to trauma, which are very valid reasons, and that's a very important conversation to have. But the interesting thing for me in the research as a pastor was Mm. three and four. So three quarters of those 40 million, 30 million people have left due to just slowly disappearing and drifting away. So, of course, our goal is to stop that drifting. Mm. And for your conversation here, you've brought four tethering points. Uh, The first we're going to explore today is tethering ourselves to Christ. Now, as somebody who's grown up in the church and those who will be listening in the same boat, um, It's obvious, it almost sounds, Dan, and that may be where the problem lies. Uh, But you also brought this verse from John, which, again, I know from Sunday school, uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, uh, John 14, verse 6. But maybe we know that almost too well or we're missing something because we're just blasé over it. Totally. I think think it's an interesting piece of Scripture to really think about. So there's some pieces going on here that are worth considering. I am the way. So what is a way? Well, a way is a type of embodiment in the world. It's literally the way we go about life. I am the truth. I am a way of um, believing reality. I am a type of reality. I am truth. And then lastly, I am the life. Now, what's interesting here is that it actually works like a little bit of an equation. The way of Jesus, his way of being in the world, plus the truth of Jesus, his truth, his way of seeing reality, will actually equal the life of Jesus. And what I think is interesting here is that often we kind of pick one of those pieces and champion (laughs) it rather than seeing that it's actually a movement here. We actually need a way of being, a posture, and we actually need a type of way of believing, this right belief, and we will get the life of Jesus. We will actually get the type of life that he promised us. And so it is an interesting thing to kind of take a step back and go, have I actually got all three of those things in play? And theologians would put it this way. The orthopraxy of Jesus, the right way of being, the right Mm. actions, plus the right orthodoxy, the right belief, will actually equal this flourishing life. Wow. So it is a bit of a framework there to think about and to go, man, is that actually capturing my heart when I think about the vision of my life? Is the vision of my life to become like Christ? Well, I'm going to need two big pieces. I'm going to need right action and I'm going to need right belief. Now, you just brought in some very big words of orthopraxy and orthodoxy. So let's take a quick break and we'll come back. And as this is going deeper, we'll get deeper into that because those two points that you bring up, I remember specifically from uh, the sermon series and the analogy of holding the rope with Mm. both hands. Mm. And I think for people who are hearing this verse that they've heard so many times before and then maybe suddenly having it reframed to figure out how to put both hands on the rope tightly Mm. is very important. So we'll cover that more. Do stick around here on Life FM. Uh, We'll be back with Dan very soon. Joining me now is Pastor Dan. Before the break, you brought up two big words, orthopraxy and orthodoxy. Mm -hmm. Could you give us a bit of an overview of what they are? And I know that might be difficult in a short time frame, Mm -hmm. but then also why are they so important? Why is one the right hand and one the left that both need to hold the rope? That's such a good question. So orthopraxy is right action right orthodoxy is right belief okay and it's it's the conviction here that we're trying to convey is like actually as a christian we're called to live both of those because that's the way of jesus and the truth of jesus to get the life of jesus so hebrews puts it like this christ has been placed like an anchor behind the curtain in the presence of god like what a what a fantastic idea, but what a weird idea. Like you don't put <laughs> anchors behind curtains; no. you put them in the ocean. But in this idea of being tethered, it's an interesting idea. Okay, an anchor is something that we use to tether. So Christ has been placed in the presence of God in His work that He has done in His 
um, crucifixion and resurrection and all those beautiful things. Mm. He has been placed in this holy of holy place. And we have been called to come and to grab on to where he has been tethered with both hands. So if we want to get that life with the presence of God that Christ is currently doing, we have to hold on with the right hand of orthopraxy, the left hand of orthodoxy. We have to live in the right ways and we have to live with the right beliefs. Mm. Now, what's interesting is what happens if you're holding on to something and you take a hand off? You have to hold hard, uh, tighter with that hand. Exactly. Yeah. And so that is the thing that I think trips a lot of people up when it comes to life in the church. It's like we lose the ability to realize that we have to hold two hands here. So sometimes we will like the sound of orthopraxy better. Oh, yeah, right life, right action. Yeah, yeah. Social justice. Yeah, doing work with the poor. Like, okay, I can hold on. But we'll let go of the hand of orthodoxy a little bit so that we can let that thing happen in greater ways. So Mm. we'll we'll loosen up on the Bible. We'll loosen up on truth. We'll let some truth slide so we can do the right things. So we can almost feel like we're being more loving. Yeah, exactly. But Jesus held both hands together. And it's such a, it's hard work. This is again, Mm. this is the (laughs) effort, the mahi of faith Mm. is like, we have to figure this out. Sometimes we will hold on to truth at the expense of right action we become pharisaical we as jesus said you know um you might have believed the right things but you do not know me yeah you know and so that is a warning uh, that we have to take on here is it's all good to know a bunch of stuff about the right ways uh the right truth sorry but like we still have to have a life that looks compassionate and kind and is at work in the world incredible well the encouragement there to hold on with both hands to the tethering point that is christ We'll conclude our conversation here, but of course, don't forget, you can find the previous ones at the website, lifefm.co.nz, and we encourage you to delve into Hebrews. But to finish now, Dan, of course, prayer seems the appropriate way to do so. So would you mind closing for us once again in prayer? Would love to. Uh, Lord, you call us to a life and a life that is abundant and good. And we we realize that to do that, we actually have to hold on with these two hands because that is exactly the way you did it. You you lived a life that was of right belief and a life that was of right action. And so, Lord, we just commit ourselves again to finding a grip with both hands, that we want to be people not of just one hand. We want to be people of two hands on the rope. So, Lord, would you, would you grace us for that journey? Would you grace us for that mahi? that we would not drift, but we would find a way to hold on to these two these two great perspectives of what it is to be in your kingdom. People who live good ways, but also people who believe right truths. In your name we pray. Amen.